Great question from Jeffrey. It's funny you guys are going brick and mortar. I'm going virtual. What's the reason for brick and mortar again? Okay, though. Why did I do brick and mortar? Listen, I was the last person that ever said they would ever get an office. I frankly, I like working from home. I, I find that I work better from home a lot of times. Um, but I was growing really quickly. I needed to hire a bunch of people. And I've found that when you are at a place where you are the service provider, practitioner, you're and you're at a place where you need to hire somebody you're moving at like 100 miles an hour okay and if you hire someone that doesn't mean you're moving at like 50 miles an hour you're still moving at like 110 miles an hour because you got to try to train them get new work do all these things i personally failed miserably at effectively onboarding training and retaining virtual talent i'm not saying it can't be done i just haven't figured it out effectively um yet I think I'm in a much better place to do it now. So I do have some staff that work virtually for me, but mine was more out of necessity because my company kept growing and growing. I, as I mentioned earlier, I hired three accountants at one time. It would be really difficult for me to train them individually, all virtually, than just to bring them all into one place. So now we kind of have a hybrid model. A lot of people work from home um, on various days. Some people work in the office a little bit. Some people work in, you know, we have some people that work in the office every day because that's just their preference. Um, so it was more on a necessity for training. Will that always be the case? I don't know. I don't commit to anything anymore. It seems when it comes to location, um, we'll probably always have some sort of hybrid, especially for the new staff. That's one of the reasons why we launched, um, the learning management system that, um, captured a lot of our training in one place. Um, that would make it, I think, easier to train and onboard, a uh, virtual team. But that's why we moved back to a brick and mortar uh, survival, mostly. Um, I think if I just brought in one person at a time, but I failed miserably even at the one person at a time. Um, so yeah, uh, now my team, like I said, is very much of a hybrid model. And, and honestly, still, that's a question mark. Like I really struggle almost on a daily basis with the idea, is a virtual better than an office? Um, I like the fact of the fact of flexibility and I can't ignore the fact I saw some statistic on Inc.com the other day that 70% of employers nowadays offer some sort of re remote work option, whether it's as needed or ongoing. And I can't ignore the fact that that's where the world is going. So to only say you can never work outside of this office, you must be here, you must be here from like 7am to 6pm and you must do this and you must do that like totally fine to create your own rules. You just have to understand, like, at least this is what I'm telling myself. I just then have to understand, is that gonna work for anyone else? Is that gonna be good for client or staff retention? And based on the amount of resources I've put into training people, like it's really easier to keep ha good, happy employees happy than it is to um, try to turn around angry, disgruntled employees and or replace them. So that's my, that's my issues. I still feel like by not being in the office, though, assuming I'm an experienced seasoned CPA, I've got 15 years of experience in this industry. Um, I've got a lot of kind of industry knowledge that I think just by being in the same space as me, people could probably pick up on and learn and that would be valuable. Um, so that's the part of me that really feels like an office-based environment is going to be maybe a good fit for me. Um, my personal preference is having a virtual space where I can pick up and I can work from anywhere. No one misses me like, where's the CEO? She's never around um, because I'm either traveling or doing whatever. Um, yeah, so the, I mean, it's a constant internal battle that I have. Um, I think that there's a lot lost by being virtual, uh, especially if you're hiring people that are a little bit more green. Some of us I know have chosen to hire contractors a little bit higher rate um, that are, have more experience and they don't need so much of that training or coaching. So that's kind of what you have to look at. Like, do you wanna pay more for people that presumably are more experienced and independent? Or do you wanna pay less and know that you have a level of supervision? And if you need that level of supervision, you need to figure out a way to manage that virtually which is not as easy as it sounds. Follow-up question, can you share your guidelines for virtual staff or concerns? My girl working from home starts Monday. Oh boy, let me start my LinkedIn or my PowerPoint. Let me share my screen again, because I think that'll be helpful. Um, 
That is a good, I don't know if I'd say guidelines because I don't have it figured out. But let me tell you my lessons learned. Let me tell you what not to do. I would say be very specific about start and stop times. Reiterate, this is what I do with my stuff. Reiterate that working from home does not mean electing whether or not you want to work at all. Okay, this is, this is a true story. Um, you know, so understand that the absence of physical space, like a physical, physical presence means that there is a greater need, a greater need for communication and transparency in what they are doing. I was having this conversation earlier. If my team were here and I could just walk around and see that they're on QuickBooks online, they seem busy, they're not screwing around, they're not texting on their phone all day, they don't have Facebook up or whatever, I can walk around the office and see that. In a virtual environment, I cannot. Here's what you need to do if this, you know, now that I've done it over time. Um, enter, like have a workflow, a workflow manager of some sort. Even if you're like me and you absolutely did to test the idea of logging your hours. After I left public account, I said I would never log my hours again in my life. I log them every day now. Have them log their hours by task. Review files even haphazardly, hazardly, is that right? Uh, that's all right, haphazardly, uh, on a daily basis or a couple times a day. Review the audit log to make sure she is logging in. Call her, I, we use Slack, call her randomly on Slack to make sure she is working in front of her computer, if she doesn't answer their phone. Just like if you were in the office, like if my boss called me and I'm sitting in my office, I'm not gonna not answer the phone. Like that's just weird, that wouldn't happen. Uh, uh, I mean, those are like the main things. So just creating that element of accountability and it seems like micromanaging, it is. Um, but that's kind of what I do. Um, another thing that working from home means that you are available to work. What do I mean by that? No babies, barking, or other background noise that prevents you from taking a client call. Assuming they're going to be client facing. Okay. And also another thing is that they need to be camera ready and their background needs to be professional. Okay. Don't show up on our zoom call with your wet shower hair, your soaking wet t-shirt, you know, your laundry piled up in the background. I say all these things because this has actually like literally happened to me before. And I'm like, look, y'all are working. You wouldn't show up to the office like that just because you're at home. Like, I don't want to see that. I don't want to see that. And just be, and it's not even in my preference so much as it is like if a, if a client needs to get on the phone with you and you look like that, like what does that look like for my business? So I actually have a good friend of mine. She works from home. She does sales. And her um, hiring manager made her take a picture, actually a video. I think she had like FaceTime them or something and like show her working area and show the background and make sure that it looks presentable because she often does um, calls. And, but I think not just, um, not just the present, the, the, the physical like ambiance and appearance of the space, but do they have a place where they can work uninterrupted with a door closed? Okay, so there are going to be babies in the background. Sometimes there are going to be barking and situations going on. There are going to be times where other people are going to be in the house. Are you going to be able to have a place where you can actually, you know, sit down and focus on your work? So that was the reason why he wanted to make sure she had a designated place. She had a desk. She had a printer. She had all the main, like, essentials of what. Now, I don't necessarily go that far, but I don't really hire exclusively virtual anymore. 